there, writers! This is Kristen Kiefer, and you are listening to episode number 28 of the Well Storied Podcast, where I share tips and tricks that help writers craft sensational novels and build their very best writing lives. Today, we're diving back into the blog archives to cover an article I originally published on November 3rd, 2016, called 10 Truths Every Writer Should Know. I wrote this article to help relieve writers' concerns, to inspire their work, and to affirm their goals and dreams for their writing life. Think you could use a little bit of that magic today? Let's dive right into today's episode. Now, I don't know about you, but never do my writing doubts hit harder than when I'm trying to pursue a big goal or when I'm working under pressure. Two things that you're likely experiencing now that we're a few days into National Novel Writing Month. But even if you aren't trying to write 50,000 words this month, or if you're listening in from the future, hello, we all need some encouragement as we make our way through this crazy, messy writing life. That's why I'm bringing you 10 encouraging writing truths today. Truth number one, you don't have to write every day. Say what? That is right, I am personally a huge fan of my daily writing habit, and if you've been around Well Storied for a little while now, you likely know that. I began writing every day after taking Faye Kerwin's Write Ember workshop back in February 2015, and I've now written for over 615 days straight. And while I encourage every writer to give a daily writing habit a try at least once in their writing journey, A daily writing habit will not work for everyone. Simple schedules and time constraints aside, we all have different writing processes. While I can personally bang out 200 words in 10 minutes at pretty much any given time, others can't find their groove in that short of a session. They work much better when they have a larger block of time to really dive into their work. And that's okay. If writing a little bit here and there just doesn't work for you, Don't feel like you aren't truly a dedicated writer. Everyone has a unique process, and we'll talk a bit about that more in a minute. Truth number two, you aren't any less a writer if you started writing later in life. You often hear stories of authors who have been writing practically since birth. Their passion is an all-consuming hunger. They simply don't feel alive if they aren't writing. And as such, they never really doubt that they aren't writers. They know it's in their blood. But that's not me. I wrote a few things here and there growing up, but I didn't truly discover my passion for writing until I was 17 years old. And for years, I doubted that I was a quote-unquote real writer. I mean, if I were, wouldn't I have been writing all my life? Wouldn't my passion have been all-consuming too? I don't know why I didn't write insatiably when I was younger, but I do know that I write insatiably now. And at the end of the day, that's all that matters. I'm passionate about writing now, and that makes me a writer now, just as much as any other author. And the same goes for you. Truth number three, you don't need talent to be a writer. Piggybacking on our last truth, you don't need to be some sort of writing prodigy in order to be a quote-unquote real writer. Sure, some writers are obviously gifted, but there are plenty of published authors who have fought tooth and nail to build their writing and storytelling skills simply because they desperately wanted to tell their stories. That hard work and dedication to your craft, that is what makes you a writer, not inherent talent. So get out there and write. Truth number four, you will get better with time. I can't begin to tell you how many writers have emailed me to express their disappointment in their skills. I just don't know how or if I can do this. I I love my story, but every time I try to write it, it just sucks. This is usually where I ask how long they've been writing. And the most common answer, Just a few months. Just a few months? Friends, writing is like any other hobby. Painting, piano playing, fishing, belching the ABCs. You need to learn the ropes and practice, practice, practice before you're going to produce anything of merit. 
you're only as good a writer as the amount of time and effort that you put in. So truly, don't look at your work and think that you're doing an awful job. Think of it this way. The sky is the limit. All you have to do is put in the work. Truth number five. There are stories left to tell. Sometimes it seems as though every story in the universe has already been written, but that's just not the case. Will every story be somewhat reminiscent of another? Sure, we are, after all, working within the confines of the human experience, and that only goes so far. But every last story can absolutely be unique. It's all about finding the right perspective. Can you tell a familiar story through a new lens? How can you take a classic trope or archetype or cliche and flip it on its head? Can you make your story unique by window dressing it in a new, fantastical world? Don't forget about the beauty that is you, the author. Your, your personality, your struggles, your situation, and your life experiences all give you an outlook on life that is entirely original. Use that. Harness it and make your latest story unique and genuine to you. Your readers will take notice. Truth number six. Your writing process will be unique. You are never, ever, ever going to write like another writer. Not entirely. We all work in vastly different ways, writing vastly different things. I, for example, write outlines that are roughly 10,000 words long. That's the length of a short story. But I do so because I find it helpful to have that much detail on hand when I fast draft my novels. I then go on to completely to complete roughly five rounds of revising and editing, using some techniques that may vary greatly from your own. And that's just scraping the surface of how I craft a book. There is nothing wrong with my process, just as there is nothing wrong with your own. What is wrong is trying to mimic another writer's process in an attempt to recreate their success. Because that leads us into our next truth. Truth number seven. There is no right way to write a novel. You are not going to find the perfect process, the perfect technique, the perfect anything when it comes to writing a book. What works for one writer may not work for any number of others. It's as simple as that. Writing a novel is incredibly hard, no matter how you approach it. So approach it in the way that makes the most sense for you. For some, that means following all of the writing rules that have been presented over the years. For others, that means ditching everything they've been taught and writing wild. And that is fine, too. Truth number eight. It's okay to write in multiple genres. This truth diverges a bit from the rest, but it's still oh so important. You often hear that in order to find commercial success, you need to stick to writing one genre. Make your name synonymous with that genre and readers will know exactly what to expect from your books. And if you do write something in a different genre, you're told to use a pen name so that readers won't get confused. But all of that advice is pretty old school now. Thanks to the rise of both self-publishing and author superstars like Stephen King and J.K. Rowling, writers have more free reign to create whatever they wish without risking their commercial success. More and more often, readers purchase books based on the author's reputation, not the intrigue of the books themselves. And as an author, that gives you the opportunity to write whatever you want, whenever you want. So just let your imagination run wild, my friends, and don't be afraid to explore a thing. Truth number nine. No one really knows what they're doing. I've said it before, and I will say it again. Writing is hard stuff. I've been writing avidly for four and a half years now, and I've been running well-storied for nearly two, but still, I don't know what I'm doing. Sure, I understand the craft of writing fairly well, but very little of that knowledge comes in handy during the daily grind. We all sit down, we ponder, procrastinate, and wonder if we're doing this right. Is that metaphor too cliché? Is this character well-rounded enough? Why does my plot feel stale, even though I thought it was super cool when I began? 
We are all just telling stories and hoping we're doing a half-decent job of it. So when you feel stressed or overwhelmed or confused, know that you've simply joined the club. Because we're all just trying to figure this out, and that's okay too. Truth number 10. We all have doubts. I'm not just talking about healthy doubts that encourage us to make our stories better, like the questions we mentioned in our last truth. I'm talking about heavy, crippling, terrifying doubts that we whisper to ourselves in our darkest moments. Things like, I will never be good enough to publish a book. No one will ever read this anyway, so why bother? All of this is a waste of time. I will never be as good as that writer. I'll be honest with you. My biggest doubt is that my first published book won't live up to the high expectations that my well-storied readers like you have for it. After all, it's easy to look at well-storied and think that I'm some sort of writing mastermind, or I guess maybe that's possible. But guys, I am so not. I am just trying to do my best here. And I know that doubt won't necessarily be true. Not if I work to overcome it. And that really is the key here. The only way your doubts are made reality is if you do nothing to prove them wrong. We all have severe doubts from time to time. Many of us even live with them consistently. But that doesn't mean we should let them stop us from chasing down our writing dreams. We simply need to remind ourselves of a few powerful truths, then keep on keeping on. Writers, thank you so much for listening to today's episode of the podcast. If you enjoyed it and you're listening in from iTunes or SoundCloud, make sure to subscribe. And if you're on iTunes, it would also mean the world to me if you could leave a quick rating and review, which would really just help the well storied podcast continue to grow. So please go ahead and do that, and thank you guys so, so very much. I'd also like to give a quick shout out to all of my lovely patrons over on Patreon who make this podcast possible. If you'd like to support the podcast and all that I create for Well Storied for as little as $1 a month, you can get involved over at patreon.com slash wellstoried. Writers, thank you again for listening in. It's been just such an absolute pleasure. Happy writing to you, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!